Hey guys, welcome back to Clinical Physio. I'm Khalid Maidan and in today's episode of Injury Analysis, I'm going to be talking to you about the high profile calf injury sustained by NBA basketball player Draymond Green. I'm going to be touching upon the background to this injury, some 3D anatomy to talk you through what might be going on, and then we're going to touch upon some of the rehab that you might do for a player like this in practice. So if you enjoy this video, we'd love it if you could smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our best content. But otherwise, if you're ready, let's dive in. So Draymond Green, a focal player for the Golden State Warriors in the NBA. And on the 6th of January, the Warriors were playing the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, during the warm up, Draymond Green felt some pain in his left calf, but the team obviously felt that it was manageable enough so that he could start the game. However, in just less than 10 seconds, Green found himself limping off the court with this pain in his left calf. Now, let's think about basketball players in general. They have to use their calf muscles a lot for running, for jumping, for landing, all involving a lot of plantar flexion. And so it makes sense that the original diagnosis may have been a problem with his calf muscle or perhaps the Achilles tendon that joins the calf muscles to the calcaneus bone. However, a tweet later released on the 16th of January by the Golden State Warriors indicated that Draymond Green's calf pain may actually be due to a problem with the intervertebral discs in his lumbar spine as identified with an MRI scan. So how does that actually happen? Let's check it out. OK, so let's start with our anatomy model and we can remove the main muscles and then focus on the nerves of the lower back. So if we dive into the lower back, also known as the lumbar spine, we can see that there are nerves exiting out of the spine to the right and left sides. And those nerves will exit the lumbar spine before running down into the legs. And their main role is to control and direct the messages between the brain and the legs. Now, if we swoop round further to the side, we can see these blue structures in between each lumbar spine vertebra. And these are called intervertebral discs, with intervertebral simply meaning between each vertebra. Now, the role of these discs is to absorb load, but from what has been established more recently, distribute load to equal parts of the vertebra so that not all the weight is placed on one section of each vertebra. Now, if we think of Draymond Green, one of the ways in which the discs can cause issues with the nerves is here in a space called the foramen, which basically means the gap where a nerve exits from the spine before it runs down to the legs. Now, as you can see, this is a relatively small gap. And so what can sometimes happen is that the intervertebral disc can irritate or put pressure on the nerve, meaning that it can create sensitivity, pain, or in some cases, a lack of sensation or a loss of power in the areas innervated by that nerve. So if we look at our model here, I have highlighted the left sciatic nerve. And if we look at the origins of this nerve, we can see that this nerve is created by the left sided roots of the L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3 nerve root levels. Now, the S1, S2 and S3 levels refer to the first three levels of the sacrum, which, as you can see, is a fused bone with no discs. So therefore, we have to be looking at the foramen on the left side at the L4 and L5 level as the potential places for this irritation of the sciatic nerve. So if we look at the journey of the sciatic nerve from the spine and into the leg, we can see that it runs through the buttock area and underneath a particular muscle called the piriformis muscle. It then runs down the posterior thigh or the back of the legs underneath a set of three muscles called the hamstring muscles. It then continues to run down the distal femur to the lower thigh where we can see the point at which the sciatic nerve divides just above or just proximal to the knee joint. It divides into two particular nerves. One is the common fibular nerve, which branches laterally towards the fibular bone. 
and the other is the tibial nerve. And it is this nerve that innervates the calf and thus is the main nerve being irritated in the case of Draymond Green. So if we zoom out a bit and if we remove the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle, we can see just how closely linked this nerve is to the calf region. And so hopefully you can see that if there is an irritation from the intervertebral discs at the L4, L5 or S1 regions of the lumbar spine, this can irritate the sciatic nerve, meaning that the tibial nerve, which is a branch of the sciatic nerve, gets irritated as well and therefore can cause the issues that Draymond Green has in his calf. OK, so we've looked at the anatomy and we know a little bit about the injury. How might we actually manage this in practice if we had a patient like Draymond Green who presented with these signs? Well, the first thing that we've established more recently when we have patients or athletes with nerve-related pain in the legs is that job number one is to actually just reduce the sensitivity and irritability of that nerve pain. Now, that might be with some really simple steps like using some nerve-based analgesia, some neuropathic analgesia, basically nerve based painkillers. Examples might include amitriptyline, pregabalin or gabapentin and these have to be prescribed by a doctor. However the simple thing there is that those are painkillers specifically targeted towards nerve pain. Now in the past we also thought that we should lie down in bed and not move for a long time if we had these kind of symptoms. However we now know that keeping ourselves gently moving within movements that are manageable and tolerable in the early stages is also a really important concept to make sure that things don't get stiff, to make sure that, especially for an athlete, he doesn't get too deconditioned. Once he starts to feel better, it might be then that we can try some more targeted lumbar spine exercises that focus on trying to get him moving a bit more. And then once the sensitivity improves further, it's all going to be about getting those lower limb muscles activated, particularly the calf, of course, in order to make sure that he can return to action. So very simply, reduce the sensitivity, make it less irritable, move within what's comfortable, and then as things get better, progress onto higher level activity to make sure that he can run, jump and land all the things he needs to do on a basketball court. So obviously, these are the things that we're hoping will happen to Draymond Green, that he'll be back on the court soon. But it's important for me to say that sometimes with other people, with other athletes, with patients that we see on a day-to-day -day basis in clinic, things may not always get better. In the vast majority of cases, they do get better, however. So focus on that rehab, that nerve painkiller use and reducing the sensitivity of the symptoms. It's always important to look out for red flag pathology, such as if you're finding that your patient is presenting with worsening loss of sensation or worsening loss of power in their legs or other symptoms like cordura equina. And it's really important for you to look out at other videos that we've done on what that is so that you can look out for these in your patients. Sometimes when patients aren't improving, they might be referred on to see a orthopedic consultant to investigate just how much of a compression or irritation the disc is leading to on the nerves to see whether or not these patients might need orthopedic intervention in the form of surgery. So once again, if you're finding that your patient is experiencing worsening pathology, Definitely, if they're experiencing symptoms of something like cordura equina, make sure you alert someone quickly to make sure that this can be thoroughly investigated and so that you can keep your patients safe. So, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Injury Analysis. Love to see you for more of these in the future. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And you can also check out more of our content on Instagram at Clinical Physio and on our website, www.clinicalphysio.com. Links are in the description below. But otherwise, we'd love to see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Khalid Maidan, and we'll see you really soon right here on Clinical Physio.